going to take uh, some notes today on e, uh, equations with have absolute value. So this comes out of lesson 2-5. So remember we did 2-6. We did 2-4. We did 2-6. And now we're coming back to the 2-5. So we're going to be solving equations. Involving absolute value. And we're at the 20th. Okay. So it's funny. I think a lot of people have forgotten what absolute value is. So we're going to start with that definition. So absolute value is simply the distance... a value is from zero. So the key word is the word distance. When you think about a number line, you're not just talking about how far you are from zero. You're, ask, you're actually talking about in relation to zero, where are you? Are you to the right, which is positive? Or are you to the left, which is negative? Okay. So when we're talking about absolute value, we're just saying how far. Okay, guys, get a grip. How far a distance is, or how far something is from zero. So if you think about that, think about all the measuring tapes, tools, rulers that you've ever looked at, and what signs do you see on those measuring devices? Can I, can I ask again? Measuring devices. What signs do you see on measuring devices? You see positive? Do you ever see negative? No. Can you, can you say, oh, my desk is a negative 34 inches? No, that doesn't make sense. So the value uh, is either, and I have to actually give you a choice here, positive, we know it can't be negative, but I have to give you a second choice. It could equal zero. Now, why do I have to specify zero? I mean, isn't that part of the answer being positive? Because um, zero can't be positive or negative. Yeah, zero is like Switzerland. It's neutral, okay? It, it has no positive. It has no negative. It's just zero. Switzerland, you don't know that Switzerland is a neutral country? They don't pick sides? They claim they are very, you know, passive. Uh, I have to say, the reality is they are not. I live there. They actually have the largest organized army, one of the largest organized armies. Their entire country is built tunnels underneath where people can go. Um, Switzerland's between all big countries, so if there's a war, they get caught in the middle. Uh, in Switzerland's history, they were mercenaries. You guys know what mercenaries are? Yeah. Okay. So they, they, they fought for whoever paid them most. What turned out, though, and this is why they decided to become neutral, is that a brother would be fighting a father. A brother would be fighting a brother, depending on who they decided to get be a mercenary for. So they, at that point, when there was so much Swiss blood shed by Swiss hands playing the role of a mercenary, they said, that's it, we're not doing this again. But they are organized. They have to be because of where they're located. Anyway, that's so much for your geography lesson for today and history. Um, so absolute value is just telling the distance. So you have a couple problems, and we're just, I don't think we're going to take more than one page, so I think we can do everything just together. And one thing that you're going to do is to evaluate Expression. So I'm going to give you an expression. Um, let's see, the absolute value. Oh, I forgot to write that up there. Let's go back here. This is the symbol for absolute value. It looks like two lowercase l's. So whenever you see that, that means the absolute value of x. You can tell how tired I am when I bird walk myself off topic. Okay, so absolutely how far is x from zero? That's all it wants to know. 
I don't want to know if it's to the right or to the left. I just want how far is it, okay? So we have the absolute value of m plus 6, that minus 14, and I'm going to tell you that m equals 4, okay? So how we solve this is where we see m, we substitute in 4. And we go about solving the problem. Well, inside, by the way, absolute value is a grouping symbol. So 4 plus 6 is 10. The absolute value of 10, well, it's 10 away from 0, so it's just 10. And then 10 take away 14 is negative 4. So that's how I could use a problem like this. So again, evaluating, just recognize that whatever's inside, if it is negative, you take the absolute value and it would become positive. So let's do one with that is actually the case. So I have 23 take away the absolute value of 3 minus 4x. And I'm going to tell you that x equals 2. Olivia, did you have a question or am I? Okay. So all I'm going to do is substitute in for x the value of 2. Now, mathematically, what's happening between the 4 and the x? Multiplication. So that's where the times 2 comes from. <coughs> so again, absolute value is a grouping symbol, so i got to take care of what's in the grouping symbol. So the 23 just hangs out, so does the minus. Inside, first thing I'm going to do is multiply 4 times 2, which is 8. Okay, next, I'm going to simplify what's inside the grouping symbol. 3 take away 8 is negative 5. Now, how far is negative 5 from 0? It's 5 spots away. So I write the absolute value of negative 5 is 5, so now I'm up to 23 minus 5. So that negative outside has nothing to do with the negative inside. And then 23 take away 5 is 18, and that's how I get that answer. Okay, Olivia. Okay, so if it's, when you have like the, just like the one number left in the absolute value, like the symbols, either if, whether it's like a negative or a positive, it would just be like that number? Yes. Okay. So that's all absolute value says is, how far is this from zero? Okay. This, on the right side, the second question, it says that negative 5 means it's 5 to the left of zero. That's a direction. Absolute value doesn't want directions. It wants distance. So I can only measure in positives. Okay, And the only reason why we have to mention zero is because zero doesn't have a sign on it. So they have to add that as a choice. Okay, But that's not an equation. That's just, this is basically, I don't know, 6th, 7th grade, maybe even earlier with absolute value. Who knows now with Common Core when they teach it? I'll have to look that up. So let's talk about equations. So an absolute value equation, let me give you a scenario. If I said to you, I'm going to be at my neighbor's house, because this is my house, um, and they live three doors down from me. So come meet me at my neighbor's house. So you come over to my house and you go, <laughs> knock stuff off. Now you look at my house and you go, three doors down or three doors down. I, I, they didn't tell me what direction to go. They just said three doors down. So what you have an option is to... This could be the house that's three doors down, or this could be the house that's three doors down. So this problem basically is explaining what happens when you're doing absolute value equations, is that we don't know whether we're going to the right or we're going to the left from our starting point. So we have to consider both cases, okay? So there's two possible answers. Arg. Okay, and in reality, you try one house. If I'm not there, then you go to the other house and go, okay, I found you finally but it would have been more helpful if you gave me like the number of the house 
or gave me a direction. But then that causes a problem, right? It's three houses to the right. And you get to the house and you're looking at it going, is it my right or their right? Or their right? You know, and then you've got the same problem shows up. You've got two cases. It depends upon what direction they were talking about. So I always tell people, when you get to my house, as you are facing my house, go three houses to the right. And that's how we can give more explicit directions. So this is what's happening when you have an absolute value. So for our problem, the house was three away from mine. It could have been three houses to the right. Or, in a weird way, it could have been three houses to the left. Because remember, signs just indicate direction. Okay? So when we're solving equations with absolute value, we need to take care of both cases. Okay? So both of them would be possibilities if there wasn't further information. All right. So let's add that in there. So absolute value equations. Absolute value equations. There are two cases to consider. Okay. Case one. The expression inside the absolute value uh, is positive or zero. Case two the expression inside the absolute value, no, inside is negative. Okay, so let's do an example and you can see how this would play out in an actual equation situation, not just where the heck am I in relationship to my house. What neighbor am I visiting? So the directions would ask you to solve. And then you can actually uh, graph the solution set. Remember, if we have more than one answer, it's called a set. So solution set. So we have the absolute value of f plus 5 equals 17. The absolute value of f plus 5 equals 17. So our two cases to consider, case 1, is that the value inside the absolute value, the f plus 5, is equal to a positive value. So a positive 17. Notice when I'm considering my cases, the absolute value is not there anymore. Okay. Case two, the value inside my absolute value is equal to a negative. So when I'm considering my cases, what's in the absolute value symbol is, doesn't change. It does not have sign changes. It's only the number on the other side. So now what I'm going to do is solve each of these and see what we come up with. So I have subtracting 5, and I get in case 1 that the value of f could equal 12. In case 2, 
I subtract 5 from both sides. Notice the math is the same, but what I get on the other side is going to be different because of the signs. Signs are the same, so I add and I get a negative 22. So I say my solution set contains 12 and negative 22. How am I going to graph that? Let's see, how could I do this? Let's do... You two might not even be good enough, though. Um, we could do four. Let's do this. Negative 20, 16, 12, 8, 4, 0, 4, 8, 12. Yikes. So we have negative 24, negative 22. No, sorry, try that again. Negative 24, negative 20 negative 16, negative 12, I might have counted wrong, negative 8, negative 4, 0, no, it was good, 4, 8, 12. And all I would do is graph two dots. I would graph um, at positive 12, fill in there, mister, and then graph at negative 22. Okay. Now, the graphing I'm not as interested in because these are pretty boring graphs, but this is discrete data. Do you remember discrete data? It means there's no in-betweens. It's either this or it's that, okay? What I'm going to be more interested in is that you provide me information in the solution set notation, so the braces and the two numbers listed. Okay, so I do want to forewarn you that there is a trick question, okay? There is a trick question. Everybody good here? Okay. So here's your trick question. What would you get with this problem? The absolute value of 3n minus 4 equals negative 1. Well, you make, uh, you make it 3 and negative 3, and then put, make the negative 4 positive 4. You can't alter what's inside. You got absolute value signs. Inside the absolute value is 3n minus 4 equals negative 1. Why is this a trick question? What did I tell you you have to get when you take an absolute value? So I see absolute value signs, but it says I get a negative. And you can't get a negative with an absolute value sign. So if you have absolute value equaling a negative, there, this is called the uh, no solution, or here's a new one. This is called the empty set. It also has a, a term that's called, let's see, remember what I... They use a symbol that looks like this. And they also call it, I think, null. I think in our other book, in the Math 8 book, they call it null. If it's null and void, that means there's nothing there. Okay, so it's kind of a weird one. But again, that's the trick question. Anytime you have absolute value symbol, Isolated by itself, and on the other side you see a negative, there's no answer. Okay? It has to be a positive. So that's what you guys are going to be working on tonight on the questions 106, 13 to 29 odd, and then we do a couple uh, 37 to 41 odd. Okay? Uh, you know what? Let's do one more example. Oh, don't listen. I don't want to hear that griping. Yeah, exactly. Just do it. Do it. Because you're going to see one like this, and I don't want to hear, but you didn't tell me how to do that. Okay. So, 4 divided by the absolute value of P plus 12 equals 14. Now, 
How is this problem different from the other problems that we've done with the absolute value? Okay, we have a fraction. What else? Well, we variables are all part of these. Julia. Okay. Wait, I can't hear Julia. Okay. So we have an absolute value of just a variable. Okay. So there's nothing else inside the absolute value symbol. I see something glaringly different. On this example, there was just an absolute value sign equals a number. This one was just an absolute value sign equals a number. Absolute value sign equals a number. This one I have math happening to my absolute value. So before I can consider my cases, I need to make sure that all I have is an absolute value equals some number. Okay, so that's what we're going to have to do is solve this equation to get the, rad or the absolute value P alone. So it works as if it just says P, same thing. So we're going to do inverse with the uh, constant. So we're going to subtract 12 from both sides. So I get a 2. Now this one's a little strange. The P can't stay in the denominator. So I'm going to have to multiply both sides by him. And... I don't want the 4 to be with him, so I can actually multiply both sides. Right now, I'll just multiply by him. I'll just multiply both sides by absolute value of P. So this cancels, leaving you with 4 equals 2 times the absolute value of P. The inverse of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. And then I'm going to rewrite it so the absolute value of P is alone, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. Once I isolate my absolute value, so I'm going to write a little note here. Must isolate the absolute value before considering the two cases. Now, we're really lucky because I just have P inside of the absolute value, so I'm just going to take case 1, my red case, and say P equals, what did we say was red? No, I forget. Case 1, positive, right? Oops. So that's your positive case. P could equal 2. That's it. No math. I've already got my answers. And then the second case was the absolute value expression could equal negative 2. So my solution would be 2 and negative 2. Kylie, I don't see you writing. Okay, Chase. No, it's what it's saying the absolute value of negative 2 can equal 2. The absolute value of 2. This is, this is us trying to figure out what I would replace P with, and P's in 